but this isn't that important. Um, I'm Regina Ambrosia, and I started Activists for Truth. Are we good, bad, or no? Yes, okay. And I started Activists for Truth the end of May, and then we have weekly meetings, and we kind of try to build up some activism for truth, because that's, you know, that's great power in truth, and that's how you have liberty, is by really know what's going on. And the media, the regular media, um, is just a lot of propaganda they're spitting out. But tonight, we have uh, Channel 4 from the UK. They called, and they asked if they could come be here with us. So, But we're going to be ourselves. We're going to do everything we normally do. We're going to talk about what we talk about. They're probably going to want to talk to some of you guys, because um, over in where they're from, which is the UK, right? Um, they, uh, over there, Obama is quite popular. And he's not very popular over here, uh, among us. And they kind of wanted to know what was our passion and uh, why we came to these conclusions. So, as things are still settling down and conversations are, are, are coming down, I want to tell you a few other things. On the table, you all should be able to reach or find a pencil and an uh, index type card. If you don't have one, we have extras. Because I really would like you to... Um, okay, Brian... Uh, we have, somebody, somebody might have two tables got a little confused around here. Here's some more cards. We can share the pencils. I'll find them. This is how it always goes. Oh, here they are. Okay. So if you would write some sort of contact, contact information down, and also what I want you guys to write is, what is your forte? What is your talent? What can you offer to this group, maybe? Um, of course, any sort of uh, passion, involvement, excitement is wonderful too. But if you have an expertise that could be useful, we would like to hear what that is. Um, uh, Joachim <laughs> has, has some extra cards here. If someone doesn't have one, please, before the end of the night, fill out some information and be sure we get it back so we can uh, contact you for other things that are going on and, and how we can get you to get involved. Okay, so um, one of the first things I usually do at all our meetings is we talk about what we did the last week. And so one of the big events we did last week was the open carry in Dallas. And um, that's always the third Saturday of the month. Hold on one second. You're not going to believe this. I'm going to take this call. Eugene, we are actually t uh, filming. Are you needing something? <laughs> Eugene? Yes, we are. Do you, do you need something right now? Are you coming? No, just, you just head on. Okay, we're starting late right now. But I'm going to get off the phone. Okay? I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay. I think maybe you'll want to turn my phone. How's that? Well, then the reason I took that is, is uh, that's Eugene Ralph. And he's coming, and he hasn't been to this location before. And, uh, yes? Just hold it close. Hold my closer, like so, and I think you get the volume. Good deal. I'll do that. I'll do that. As you all know, this is uh, this is uh, very natural. We, we are very casual people here usually, and I don't usually have a microphone. So, but getting back to our event that we did on Saturday, uh, the third Saturday of the month is open carry. Uh, some of you may know what that is. Um, and others that don't, it's the um, the idea of getting people used to seeing people with long guns, with long guns. Um, the um, uh, you know in Texas, it is not open carry pistols but long guns are allowed, and unfortunately, because people haven't been exercising that, um, when people see people walking around with guns, they call the police because they're scared. And we need to help them feel as though guns aren't scary, bad guys are, and it's a Second Amendment issue. So we've been um, doing this now for four months, and uh, some of you know the history was because there was a father and son walking in Temple, and um, he was pulled over because someone had said they saw a guy with a gun. And he was out there with his Boy Scout uh, son, and he was actually arrested. And this prompted a lot of us to say, you know, when you, have a, uh, when you don't exercise your right, you could lose it. So it's just bringing awareness. Well, that next, that first time that we met, which was four months ago, I think we had maybe 25, 30 people. It's consistently now about 50 people, and in Tarrant County, and now it's lots more cities, so it's kind of spreading the people out, there were 79 people. And so we get together at 10 in the morning until about 1. We meet on the grassy knoll in Dallas, kind of appropriate, and uh, meet there and then walk and go out to eat. And a lot of establishments are, are very, you 
know, happy to have us come in. Actually, uh, an armed society is a polite society. And if people start realizing it's not the guns, it's the bad guys. So that's the issue on that. It was very effective. Um, we usually try to get pictures and video. And Rudy and her husband are very, very good at that. They got a camera that does this time-lapse photography. And they had it set. And for an hour and a half, they, they filmed. You can watch everything in three minutes. It is so cool. So we are on, uh, you know, we have the Facebook page. And we also have the website. And the website is activistfortruth.com. And the Facebook, I know a lot of you are not on Facebook, but we try to post these things all the time so that y'all can, um, if you not, haven't been there, you'll feel like you were there, especially in that one hour, one in three minutes. It's really good. So, um, okay, so speaking of our website again, tonight's presentation, which we started this, okay, even though we've met uh, for the last, you know, since May, we've just started in the last five weeks or so to have our second hour um, be a topical uh, guest. And that's, and that's going to show the variety of who we are and what we do. Um, when you guys leave, I want you all to take some of these flyers. Um, because next week is the 26th, and we're going to meet here. It's a Tuesday. And we've been meeting on Tuesdays, and we're going to meet on Tuesdays through November. And then in December, it's going to be a little goofy, so check the calendar. And then in January, we're going to go back to Mondays. Because we're finding that a lot of competition with other groups on Tuesdays, tea party groups. And we don't want to be competition. We're trying to help the other groups. Whenever we hear there's a good tea party and things that are going on, we promote what other people do. It's not all about us. We want, you know, hey, that sounds got better, whatever happened. Okay, so on the 26th, we're going to be talking about no fluoride. And we're going to talk about what's, why no fluoride. We're going to have someone talk about that. The next week, we're meeting on a Wednesday, and that's going to be activism for no, no fluoride. We're going to talk about how you go down to the city council and how we're going to petition it to get out of our water. Because in Austin, it worked. They did it. So hopefully I might even try to get somebody from Austin up here, and um, we'll, we'll do something like that. But that's what these, that's what these meetings, that's what these uh, topical guests are going to be. They're going to be like an hour long. They're going to be local people, and it's going to be the tip of the iceberg. I guess that's what you call it. Well, anyways, it's going to be touching, touch, the, touching the, the topic a little. It won't be super in-depth, but it'll be kind of developing some interest in it, and then we'll see where we're going to go with it. The week after that, um, fluoride, and we're going to talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, I know a lot of you have heard more about it. Um, it's, it's like uh, NAFTA on steroids. And uh, we need to we need to get informed. I think partly when I thought about doing these one-hour things, it's not necessarily for the public, but anyone can come. It's kind of for us to know what we're talking about a little bit, so that we can present it and find ways of um, having a bigger uh, meeting about it. And then the one after that is um, uh, Common Core. That's another big hot button that I think people have heard about, but you need to know what you're talking about. So we're going to have some people here, and then we're going to talk about the activism about it. Because even in the schools around here, some of that stuff is encroaching in. People have been finding it, and we need to talk about how to be proactive in that area. So that's just some of the diversity. Um, um, what's his name? Ben? No, not Ben. The other hand. Paul. Paul was asking me, what is like our campaign of our, our group? And really, there isn't a, a main one, in a way. We're everything. It's truth. It's, I guess truth would be it is the main broad concept, and it engulfs a lot of things. Because we're going to be looking for candidates that are running constitutional uh, campaigns and what they're thinking about and why they're running and stuff like that. And we'll be having some of them here, and we're going to be talking about how to vet them and uh, support them. We're also going to be talking about other topics. Uh, we are blessed tonight to have the Moriarty staff. We, um, yay! <laughs> One of my really big things about truth was uh, whistleblowers. I am really, really passionate about whistleblowers. I, uh, we, even before we had this group, we, um, we were uh, supporting, you know, Bradley Manning, and we were protesting and, and sign waving for back Bradley Manning because he was in, he was held captive for a thousand days without even being. Um, or they, what do you call it? Charge, charge. And again, I have told Emily this already. I get for a loss of words all the time. I say the long words, but I know you're all my family. I don't want to feel, you know, really, we're all in this together. We help each other.
other, we don't pick on each other, you know, especially <laughs> me and the way I talk. But it's the concept of the whole thing. So with the Bradley Manning thing, it's all about whistleblowers. And um, these are whistleblowers right here with us. Um, we had had a meeting in April, I think it was April, and it was uh, abolish the IRS. Okay, so these are other things we tackle. We tackle things like that. We tackle issues and, um, and agencies that aren't supposed to be there. And it, we're a very constitutional-minded group. And um, I had put on this, uh, we had rented a theater, and we showed um, Freedom to Fascism. And in that movie, there were three main people, or there were a lot of people, actually. But there was jo Joe Bannister and Sherry uh, Jackson, Sherry Peel Jackson, Jackson. yes. And uh, Tom Selgis were in this movie. And so we proceeded to, in the next three weeks, bring them in. Uh, one of them from California, one locally was here, more or less, and then one from uh, uh, Georgia. And we put that on, and we had a nice event. And right before the event started, and, and in three weeks we put it together, it was pretty high budget in a way for us, you know. And um, the pastor, Pastor Stephen Broden, because we were using his church, he came and said, there's these people here. Do you think you can give them a few minutes? They really need uh, access to talking to people. They have a story that they need to tell. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how can we fit them in? But I said, yeah, yeah, we'll give them 10 minutes. And they went up there and in their 10 minutes talking about their whistleblowers, they, nobody will listen to them. They have all this opportunity to help uh, expose things in Libya. They were in Libya. 17 times they were in Libya. They're business people. They weren't people there for any sort of activism or anything like that. They were there doing business. And they saw what the atrocities that were going on. And they wanted to find a way to get this out there. Because they had been told not to do it. They were told to shut up. And a soft kill had been put on them. So for the last, I'm bad with time, maybe a year, whatever, a while. How long was it? This Seven months. Seven months. Their doors kept closing in. And people wouldn't talk to them. Three years. Yeah. So it was a long time. And their resources kept going down and down, and it was like, we got to do something here. So when they talked 10 minutes to the crowd, I said to the crowd, do you guys want a, an event with these people? And they go, yes. So we, the next month or three weeks later, we had an event for the Moriarty's. And that was one of the main times they talked, the, the first time, I guess, you talked in front of a crowd, and um, they, their story got out. So we're going to segue here. So I have their DVDs. And uh, they're ten dollars, and they're three hours, and there are tons of information on there, and you'll know them, a part of them. It's, but it's still unfolding. It's still unfolding. They're the official spokespeople for the tribes of Libya. They can provide such a service, but the doors are closed. Well, the story thickens here, I guess you say, because activists for truth. Um, Pete Sessions is the um, the uh, chairman of the rules committee, and there is a. Um, a bill that was put forward, a resolution that was put forth by Frank Wolf, and he wants an independent investigation of Benghazi. And it's been co-sponsored by 177 other Congress people, and he's blocked it. Well, he's my congressman. And I always look at things like, oh, that's a god thing. I mean, it's just amazing that he's our congressman, my congressman, he's in this area, and we have an opportunity, we need to get to him. And so we have banners, and before the night's out, they're in my car. We made banners, and we've been protesting, we've been trying to get into him. But finally, after three tries of catching him in the driveway and different places, he said, okay, I'll talk to your people. And coincidentally, they were at the event, at this event, where we kind of cornered him. He talked to them, um, he asked Joanne, okay, if you, if you talk to this guy, give me his phone number. And he called the phone number, the guy called him back, he came out after talking, he says, this is real. This is legitimate. Well, he went back to Washington. He met with the Defense Intelligence Agency. That's who he talked to on the phone. Defense Intelligence, yeah. And, and they, uh, what's it called? Cred gave it credibility. Validated. Validated. Yeah. They validated their, what they said and what they did. And now, this has only happened in the last week. I mean, everything that we're doing, when you hear all the things we're doing, this is only within a, I mean, it's popping everywhere, what we do. And um, they'll, he'll be back this week, and he has sent them an email that he wants to talk to them. So he wants to talk to them now. Oh, I'm doing Sweet. something right now. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Yay! That's a success story. But that only, so they're going to be here. They just came back into Dallas today. And for Pete Sessions will be here in the next few days. They're going to be meeting with them. And he said to them, I was there when he talked to them.
He said, will you just get this soft kill off of us? And they've got such a story to tell. Um, this DVD tells so much of it. Ten dollars. I hope support them, and then you'll get to get a basis. But they're here tonight. And so the way this room works, or uh, La Madeline works, we get the room for free. Okay? But they kind of want us out of the room by 9.30. But there's always outside to talk, or the restaurant's really open until 10 o'clock. So well, I'm going to wrap this up by 8 or so, and then we'll let um, uh, Q talk. And then we'll, uh, all you people will be around here to talk to each other, and please talk to them. We'll be having another event with the Moriarty's. Um, and uh, if you can think of a way to get to your congressman, because... Even though Pete says he's doing it and stuff, he's a politician, and it's amazing how things drop all the time. So we're going to believe it when it gets done. You know, that's one thing. So that's just one topic and one thing. Um, we have, um, we have, okay, I'm going to tell you about what we're doing. Okay, these are the events that are coming up, okay? This is a very, uh, memorial, uh, anyways, uh, it's a week for anniversaries, I guess you'd say. It's the 50th anniversary um, for the assassination of um, John Kennedy. Of course, you all know that. And also, it's the 100th anniversary for the Federal Reserve. And End the Fed is another one of our campaigns and Return Sound Money. Um, so we have two events that we're working with. We're going to be doing um, on Friday. There's an End of the Fed ra rally uh, uh, from 4 until 8. But I'm concerned about that one. You all have a map on your table somewhere, you should have one, of all the closures, the street closures, okay? The city of Dallas does not want conversation about um, conspiracies or other ideas other than the single shooter uh, concept, um, which was the official story. Um, there's so much to that story. And um, they don't want it exposed, other things. They don't want it talked about. I mean, it's exposed. It's been 50 years. And supposedly, after 50 years, truth was going to come out. And they've sealed it again. They keep sealing it and saying it's going to be longer. So Alex Jones, I don't know who here does not know who Alex Jones is. You all know who Alex Jones is, right? Yeah, I hope. There, right? Yeah. Who's Alex so Jones? Alex Jones is coming to Dallas. I put it on this flyer. I, somebody. Who would pass these out? Let's see. You pass them out to everybody. I want everybody to take three. My theory is you keep one and give two away, okay? And I have even more than that. If you know you're going to be going to an event, hand out more. This talks about when we meet here, what, what's coming up, and stuff like that. Okay, so Alex is coming tomorrow. It's on this, this paper. Eight o'clock. Alex, hey, Joe, 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 could we wait until the end to do that? Do you mind? Because then it will have more attention for you, okay? Good. So... At 8 o'clock tomorrow at the Federal Reserve Building, which is, um, Pearl Street. It's, uh, yeah, 2200 Pearl Street, okay? And, um, uh, he's going to hand out flyers. And I have a sample of one, um, and it's basically what he says is, they don't want us talking about another, um, uh, another story or another concept of what could have happened. Well, we're going to flood the area. So he has 20,000 flyers. I have heard he was going to have 100,000. He said 30 today. But he keeps changing the number. Originally he said 100,000, then it was the 20, 30, whatever. But he's going to have a lot of flyers. 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock tomorrow, if you go to the Federal Reserve Building, um, he'll be giving you a, a hundred flyers. And what he's hoping is you'll spread them in your workplace. And you'll just get them in the hands of people so people will have another thing to think about. Okay? And so that's on Wednesday. Now on Thursday, we have put together with some other people, Aaron and I, our co-coordinators, -co working for the Actors for Truth part of this. And then um, George Butler, um, he is from Austin. And he is going to be streaming and moderating an event on Thursday. And then Pastor Broden is actually the host of the event because we're using his church and Pastor Broden's church it's on the flyer <laughs> it's on the flyer look at the flyer it's um 1321 Rowan it's uh, a uh, Fair Park Bible Fellowship Church and it is going to be from 7 until 9 30. Now this is going to be winging kind of thing here because um it's, a, it's kind of, and it'll be even more than what I'm telling you now because as time goes, another one uh, confirms. Okay, the basic concept of this is it's going to be truth 
and it's going to be encompassing, of course, JFK, 9-11, but the New World Order. It's going to encompass a lot of things, and it's going to be a panel discussion, okay? Um, the people that we know are confirmed right now are going to be Jim Myers, Jim Mars, I know that, Jim Mars, Jim Mars, um, we all, who doesn't know who Jim Mars is? Does everybody know? He's an author, he's an authority on JFK and so many things. He's actually done two events for us. Um, he's written a book and he's actually been invited to go to the JFK Lancer event. Now the JFK Lancer event has been going, it's the longest running, how do you say it, Joe? What do they say? A yearly convention. It's a yearly convention. It's the longest running yearly convention, they say. And um, they're going to have experts all about uh, the JFK assassination, people that have, uh, people that have uh, information and actually pieces of, you know, go ahead. Real research. Real research. Real research. And um, so they're going to be in town. Tickets for that was like $350, and it's a four-day event. But we have, we, Activists for Truth, are sharing a table with not North Texans for 9-11 Truth. I know these people, but the titles are confuse me sometimes. But they're a 9-11 Truth uh, group that has been uh, working really hard to expose the truth about 9-11 for years, ever, you know, 10 years. And they've handed out more than 57,000 DVDs for free. They have almost 1,000 DVDs to, to distribute at this JFK Lancer event, and they have some to give you tonight. They have some DVDs. They're really, really good about that. And um, they meet every week on Thursday at Barbeck's Restaurant, which is over on Garland Road. And um, they're, you know, you should go support them too. It's another way to connect with like-minded people and um, find out what they're doing and help them. And, you know, they've been around a long time and uh, they know a lot of people. So that's important. So before you go, he's got some DVDs for you. And um, that's Joe over here. And so, and so, so now this table. Yes, sir. Yeah, this joke. Go ahead. I've got four different discs. Can I just pass them out? And well, you know what? My theory on that is it gets confusing. People start talking, and, and I'm not to be rude. I, I, I actually, when I used to have a meeting, I used to lay the groundwork really heavy, like a school teacher kind of sort of. And just because it's only fair, you know, because trust me, what you think you're talking to somebody about is important, and everybody else can't hear. Now, this time we do have a microphone, but it doesn't work. So if you don't mind waiting till the end, oh, and then... I just take one, pass it. <laughs> you're going to push it? <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. The main thing is, is he's got them for you. But the, um, uh, the JFK Lancer event with this table that we have is going to be out in the hall. And so we know that there's going to be a lot of speakers there, a lot of like-minded people, because people that kind of believe in the 9-11 conspiracy, I mean the JFK conspiracy, probably believe in the 9-11 conspiracy, or at least they're a good person to connect with, and then they might be activists for truth people. So we'll have flyers, and we need some people to maybe volunteer to go sit at the table some of the time. Uh, that's right, uh, Raylene has already agreed to be there on Saturday for a time, and uh, maybe Raylene, would you take on being the contact person for people to talk to about where it is, and then you can answer questions, and is that kind of thing? Yeah, because I'll be there from like 12 till, as long as you need me, like from 9 or not away. Okay. Well, good. You might want to do it with somebody. The main thing is is to kind of catch people. What I've always said to Aaron, my friend here, Aaron, um, I kind of like to have you guys think about things like this. There's outreach uh, events that we do. That means somebody else is putting it on. We really don't have much responsibility, but we know we can catch some people there. So, for example, um, some of these freedom work things where they get thousands of people, you know, they put on all, they pay for the venue and they've got the people there. Well, you catch them when they're leaving, you know, you give them something and talk to them and, you know, you can unite with them that way. Then there's the events that we sponsor. We've usually got some sort of money probably involved in it or time and stuff like that. And then there's other ones that we just promote, you know, which is, I'll, I'll lead into that one now. On Thursday, so you all know on Thursday where you should want to be. It's at Pastor Broden's Church, Fair Park Bible Fellowship Church. It's free. <coughs> this church holds about 300 people, but you could fit more in. Um, we need some help. We need help at everything. There's always a way that you can be helpful. What I try to say to people is, if we're going to be there, don't just go there and watch the event. Be there and, and invite
invite other people, kind of be a family kind of thing, you know? And uh, you'd be kind of working the crowd a little. That's what's really helpful. Or see, there's not money to be taken, but sometimes we have something that we want to sell or we want to promote. You know, this time there's not a lot of that going on. It's going to be a pretty fast-paced evening because I don't think I finished telling you all the people that are going to be there. So Jim Mars is going to be there. And listen to this. Coast to Coast is the most listened to radio program. And John B. Wells is a host on there. And he's coming. He's going to be part of the panel discussion. Then you've got the Jim Mars. Then you have Luke Rendowski. Rendowski. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, he is a young man that started We Are Change. And he's really amazing how he can get that microphone into a lot of uh, people's faces and get them on camera. He's awesome. So he's traveling here right now and he's going to be at our event. And um, also, hold on, ah, it's in front of me, uh, a guy named Chris Mulligan um, with Tri, no, Trin Day Publishing. Um, and what he did was he started this publishing company and he publishes books that other people won't touch. So for example, he's traveling with Judith um, Judith okay. Barry. Barry Parker. Baker. Baker. <laughs> yeah, Judith Barry Baker. Okay, she was the girlfriend of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. And she wrote a book that's called Lee and Me. And she was there, you know. So she's going to be in town because of the JFK event. And hopefully she'll give us 20 minutes about her personal history being here and all that stuff. And um, that's very likely. Those are, she's not confirmed, but she's likely because she's traveling with... Chris Mulligan, who is confirmed. So, the, the, the list will grow, and I'll tell you in a small group here or whatever, um, probably Alex will be there. He's in town, he should be there, he probably will be there, Alex Jones. Um, so, anyways, it's, it's, it's free, and it's, uh, it's going to be real powerful, I think, and I think you'll enjoy coming. That's Thursday. Now, a week ago, this only is now, uh, last Tuesday, I wasn't talking about this because we hadn't come up with it yet, and what I was trying to promote for you guys to go to was the event that's called, hold on, it's Thursday, it's an outreach, and it's um, North Dallas Tea Party. Their guest is going to be Mark Levin, and Mark Levin is a radio host that wrote a book, and he is promoting a constitutional convention, and this is very dangerous. Yeah. Now, we might know this, trust me, some people don't. Driving here, um, well, not driving here, but earlier today, Mark Davis was questioned, well, what do you think about the CONCON? -Con? He sidestepped it and said, oh, I don't think it'll happen. But it's nice to see people are working on alternative ideas. And he should have blatantly and coldly said, a constitutional uh, convention is dangerous. I have, some, um, I have some, some of these. John Birch Society stopped the constitutional convention. <coughs> I don't know what year it was, but it was a while ago. Now, somebody probably knows the year. Um, they lobbied uh, Georgia, and Georgia was the turning state. If Georgia had said yes, but it looked like they were going to, they would have had their 34 states, and they would have gone into a constitutional convention. What they try to do is pick a topic that Congress is not acting on, and then they get the public riled up to say, hmm, we're going to get Congress to do this, and it is a provision, if that's the right word, in the Constitution that you can do a constitutional convention or a convention of the states. And that's when, and that's what happened when we got our constitution. But that's when we had people like the founding fathers. You know, we don't have those people. And the first thing you need to say to Levin and other people is, we can't even get our congressmen to do uh, uphold the um, amendments that are there in the constitution. You expect them to go in and revamp and do these things right? Why would you think that would be possible? And why would you think that could work? So. The people who would be running it are very dangerous. Yes, sir. Uh, is there, I'm sorry to interrupt. No. Is this the North Dallas Tea Party or the Far North Dallas Tea Party? Oh, is there a the difference? Far North, far. far North Dallas. Yeah, far North. Far North Dallas. Okay. Yes. What? It's RSV. If you want RSVP to them, because I know some people maybe can't make it down to the Fair Park one. They'd rather they live up closer. The deal of it is, um, there's a great venue, and I keep crossing over, but all this stuff really does go together. This is how my mind works. This is what I'm hoping your mind will work like. But venues, you got to think of venues, and this this uh, one that where they're having it is at the Valley View Mall. I'm really impressed that Valley View Mall is under construction, so they have um, let 
this one, uh, it used to be at Urban Outfitters, I think, or American Eagle, whatever, a clothing store, and they let you rent it as a community room for $150. That's a great venue. It can hold like 300 people, they give you 65 chairs, and it's a really good idea, but that's what I mean. I really want people to maybe, like when I ask you about these cards, people that would help think of where would be good venues, how could this one fit for that one, and all that kind of stuff. How much does it cost, and what can we do? And we got to have a list of these things so we can go to them, and, and when we come up with a speaker or something, we can plug it in really fast. So this event, the reason I would have wanted us to go, and I would have gone to it if I wasn't doing this other one, would be to hand out information about why a con con is not a good idea. There's some people that are going to be there that said, if you come, we'll give you the information to hand out. So if you think you want to go, it's on the card. There's an RSVP. There's my phone number on everywhere, usually, or there's the website, or there's the Facebook. You can get to us. You know, there's, you know, so just ask me if you want to go. We can help you whatever way. The con con is a very bad idea. Mark Levin is pushing it. I don't think, he's not a stupid guy. So Except the question we have. the Constitution gathering is not good for us, why is it A Constitution, con constitutional convention, why is it not good? Well, why is it dangerous? Why is it dangerous? Because the, the rules in the Constitution that say when you, when, you, when you have a constitutional convention are very loose. What it says is the people that are picked that go into that meeting, they have like, they have the ability to change anything they want. And they have no reigning in powers. It's really very loosey-goosey. And it's very dangerous because of the people that would be going in there. We see that our Constitution is being circumvented, I hope that's the right word, all the time. And it's these people that are doing it. So that's what they're going to do. They can go in there and they can wipe it all out. They can change everything. So for example, here, somebody else can say it a whole lot better than me. The states should rein in our out-of-control federal government by enforcing the Constitution through nullification or unconstitutional federal laws, rather than by revising the constitu Constitution through an inherently risky constitutional convention process. We have methods to, to get things done, traditional methods of adding amendments where states approve them. We don't need to have a constitutional convention that opens up our Constitution to radically being changed. It really does. It's horrible. It's very scary. You're going to get one of these for sure. This has a lot of information about it, okay? So, so there you go. And anybody else? I have about 10 or 12 if anybody wants one, but that goes to Albert. Okay, so no problem. Okay, moving right along with all of our events. We have more events. Um, okay, so Saturday we have an End the Fed rally. Okay, let me talk about the Friday one. The Friday one is the actual day. It's the 22nd, and nationally, they're going to their Federal Reserves and they're protesting with signs. So a call was put out to who wants to head up the one in Dallas. I and another friend said, we'll be the contact person in Dallas. But from the beginning, I knew that we would be different. This goes back to the map that's on your table. Um, the, the Dallas city of Dallas has closed off lots of streets for, for the JFK situation and just lots of stuff. So I do not think the Federal Reserve will be available for us to protest on Friday. So another friend who um, has had, for the last six years, they've had End the Fed and Return Sound Money events in front of the Federal Reserve. This is the sixth year. She made an event for Saturday, and it's at 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I think that one's going to happen. The one on Friday, we're just going to have to um, wing it. I mean, if it works, go down there, try it, try and see what's going on. Alex Jones is in Dallas. Alex is talking about storming, storming uh, Dealey Plaza and all that stuff. So play it by your, on Friday. That's the 22nd. That's the day that we have on there for uh, protesting the Federal Reserve. So it's just going to be a heyday. And there's going to be tens of thousands of people. It's going to be really amazing. But we can turn it to our benefit. I can say all of this stuff can be to our benefit. Be wise. Uh, check it out. Call me. Look and see what we're doing. <coughs> so far on that. And then, of course, I put on here, um, you know, keep, keep in mind the, the next uh, open carry is, I think, on the 21st of December. And then I do want you to notice that in December, please go to the website. December, it's kind of goofy. One of the days, it's a Wednesday. One of the days, it's a Monday. But once we get up to January, it'll be consistently on Mondays. 
And we'll try to get the back room. It's a lot better. <laughs> a lot more organized. Okay, so that's where we discuss the things that are coming up. And that, let me think. Um, I'm trying to think. It's 8 o'clock. Another thing I like to do is I try to stay on schedule, even though we start late. So I don't know what I've cut out, but it's right about 8 o'clock. And um, what we're going to... 7.50. Oh, I'm looking at that one. No, oh, that one's been wrong. Okay, well, cool. I'm not going to just fill the time up, guys. <laughs> you have 12 Unless, minutes. What do we need to talk about? You also gave Pete Sessions Mike Zulo's affidavit. Was that this week? I don't oh, know. you're right. I don't know. They're right behind you. Who is? Hi! Oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, um, yeah, that's the other thing we did, which is really important. Um, you know, Obama, okay, and that's one of the things, oh, we did the Obama protest, too. Obama was in town, uh, oh, several of us went to greet him as he was turning into uh, Temple Emmanuel, and he turned right in front of us, and uh, my sign said, and Aaron wants to bring this to the meeting on Thursday, said, arrest Obama, an activist for truth underneath it, and they were taking pictures of us. I mean, it was real clear. They were taking pictures while they were in the car. So, um, Anyways, because other people say impeach him, I'm not for impeaching, I'm for arresting him. He shouldn't be in there in the first place. Um, he's a forger. Um, it's, it's been confirmed. We know that it's the birth certificate is a forgery. Um, he was never vetted. And this comes to the uh, Mike Zulu, uh, uh, the cold case posse by uh, uh, Sheriff Opayo. He set this up. He's a 50-year veteran um, police enforcer guy, you know, sure. he's honorable and, and all that, and he has totally pulled together this posse, and Mike Zulu is one of the guys who put together a 207-point affidavit, signed affidavit, and um, it says that, you know, Obama needs to be served papers, and he needs to be arrested, okay, but nobody is brave enough to do it, you know, and we need to do it, so... We need to get to our congressman. So two meetings ago, we had this affidavit, okay, 69 pages. Um, Aaron and Rudy are real big birthers, and um, I'm a birther too, you know. If you want to be called that, that's what they do to you. You know, I grew up fighting things, and the first thing they want to do is they want to put a bad stigma on you somehow. You're a racist, you're a, you're a birther. Theorist. Yeah, it's just conspiracy theorists. When that's just a way to divert it away from what you're talking about, actually. Um, so don't ever let that bother you. So, um, okay, so Mike Zulu has this affidavit. Well, I brought it to the meeting two weeks ago, and I was saying to the people, I brought 11 copies, and I said, or something like that, and I said, everybody should have a copy in your car because you never know when you're going to come across a senator or a congressman because they're the ones that can move it forward. Well, Albert was wonderful. He took that and he went and made more copies and brought it back. And then I had the opportunity, because we made it a good opportunity, two of us with a camera uh, tracked down where Pete Sessions was going to be. And this is on, this is on YouTube. Um, and I presented it to him and I told him that Congress has a responsibility to vet the president. So every one of them is in violation of their oath of office. They're supposed to protect and defend the Constitution. And they're not. We've let a, a guy in the office, we don't even know who he is. His documents are sealed. Um, there's so much suspicion and question, which there shouldn't be. If there was a vetting process, there wouldn't be the questions. So even if anyone wants to get you on anything, why do all those questions linger? It's because they didn't do their job. So I went to put it in his hand when you watch the thing. If you're there, you know how someone you go to hand them something and then they don't want to get it? But I pushed it in his hand and I said, no, this is for you. So it's on record. And that's what we want to do. We want to, um, we want to have it on record that they received it. It's now in their hands. So I've been waiting to have a meeting with him about this also. Because I'm going to say to him, this is only maybe 10 days ago or something like that. To say, did you read it? What are you going to do about it? Okay, this is in your hands. Just like the Moriarty's. It's like, okay, you met him. You know the story. <coughs> follow up on it, because he's the same congressman that's stopping Benghazi, and um, it's there, you know, four, four people died uh, for one year, because the anniversary went by on 9-11, yes, four Americans died, yes, and count, yeah, I know, and so it's just um, terrible that they haven't looked into it, there's 31 people that survived, and they have been muzzled, oh, there's another tape where I got Pete, and I said to him, there's 31 um, survivors that were muzzled. I don't know what you're talking about. But the, tra 
And I put it, we made a Facebook, guys. You all should go to it. It's Pete Sessions Stop Blocking Benghazi Truth. So when we put this YouTube of saying this to him, underneath it, I had another congressman testifying that these 31 survivors have been muzzled and they want it open. So there's a lot going on, guys. I don't want you to be discouraged. It, it could be overwhelming. We don't really want to get overwhelmed. We want to be activists. And um, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Yes, really. I just got an email today from Liberty Council, and they were uh, talking about the big dog. Oh, that's a good idea. Or, uh, oh. Who's calling me? It was Eugene. Oh, I just got an email today from Liberty Council, and they're real active. They're lawyers. <coughs> they're good. Rights. Yeah, and they were talking about the Benghazi thing, wanting to get it opened up, that it's the, that it's a big cover up. Yeah, I just got that today. So. That's awesome. Yes. Egyptians, they filing a criminal charge, war crime charges in the international courts. Hey, Raylene, give this to him, and would you repeat that? The Egyptians, they're calling uh, criminal charges in the international courts against Obama and his brother, and in their relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. That's true. And uh, there, there is one thing that really everybody here in the room need to know. I was listening Keep to the power yeah. hour, and there were, that somebody came on the air, he was a listener, but it seemed to be this one, this is the most powerful group that will do more than what we can do. And they really can take the nation back. Okay? And I don't want to get too involved in this, but I'm going to give you the website. And you can go in. I'm just going to give it to you. And just search it for yourself. It's called nationallibertyalliance.org. And there is videos you can watch. And... You know, all you need 25 in each state to pursue this. There you go. Okay, thanks. You know, that's good. No, that's good, Albert. You know, I'm going to hand the microphone to the Moriarty's because I had told you that um, there's breaking news, and they have, they're the uh, they're the official spokesman to the um, tribes of Libya. And Dr. Corsi, um, up till even recently, had um, reported on at least 20 of their uh, documents and stuff like that. But just in the most recent days, they've been doing one more. But I'm going to have them, I'm going to give them a good five minutes. Five minutes, guys, want to stand up here? I think they, should, they, they need five minutes to stand up in the front and tell us what's going on. First of all, I want to throw a curveball out here. I think everybody in this room probably is, is uh, Black Panther and they just don't realize that. If you'll go to Alex Jones, had a two-hour program with uh, Pinkney. Larry Pinkney. Larry Pinkney. And he said that uh, it's a, great, it's a great, great article. He started the Black Panthers, and he said uh, that his, all of his speeches, he ends with uh, be one, no. meet one. Yeah, each one, teach one. Yeah. Each one, teach be one, one. Each one, meet one. Each one, meet one. Each one, teach one. I think yeah. that's what he said. So his, his uh, truths in there, Power to the People, really good. You all ought to watch that one. But uh, just recently, Joanne was on the, on the horn, gosh, 20 hours the people in Libya finally had enough. You know, there were half a million of them killed by NATO and two million living in exile. A million are homeless in Libya. That leaves two million that are living in, in their homes but under complete anarchy. And the people finally had enough. No food. Their their wives and daughters getting raped constantly and, and the country just blown up. Owned by Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda runs the place. They do whatever they want to do. They they killed Chris Stevens to let, it, to let the world know that they do control that country. And uh, uh, Dr. Corsi's written now about 22 articles. The latest one was based on Joanne's research, and she was getting constant phone calls and videos out of Tripoli, and she'll tell you what happened. Uh, just started three days ago. What happened in Tripoli is the uh, Mizrata militia, they call themselves, but they aren't really militia. What they are are Al-Qaeda gangs, and they're armed. And they're absolutely ruthless. They've been selling black market uh, body parts, organs. people's body organs. They have a lot of people in prison illegally there. A lot of them have been tortured to death in Misrata. They, they train the Muslim Brotherhood in Misrata. They're armed, funded, and trained there by Qatar. Qatar brings them uh, a lot of uh, weapons and money. Um, what happened was 
they decided, the Libyan people decided they'd had enough, and the, the government there, there is no government, really. There's no effective government there. They, they passed a regulation that they said, we want all the militias out of Tripoli. These armed gangs that walk the street, that control everything, that can stop a car and take the woman if they like, or whatever they want to do. There's no police in Libya, there's no army in Libya, there's no safety or security in Libya. So the people took to the streets on Friday after mosque, and they went to the area of Tripoli where these, uh, these gangs hang out, and they were fired upon. They killed over 52 people in the streets and over 400 wounded. That was as of last uh, Friday, because it was Friday after the mosque. I started getting all this stuff. It, they, they contact me all the time because they want Dr. Corsi to put this information out. No Western media will talk about this. So all day long I got this stuff, and they, when they broke in, the people went home, and they got whatever weapons they had and went back and tried to fight these guys. And they broke into the villa, and they found operating rooms, and they found human organs in glass jars. The with Egyptians, all the documentation. With all the documentation, the Egyptians just reported that the Mizrata militias were selling human body parts on the black market. So what's happening now is the people of Libya are trying to rise up, but the Mizrata militia is highly funded. They're Al-Qaeda. They were armed by NATO, by the U.S., and the, the, the original Mizrata people were, came from Turkey, and they were Jewish, and they converted to uh, Muslims, but they were the uh, mafia in Libya, and they controlled everything. So when the people of Libya were sick of their mafia, they were going to throw them out. They joined NATO immediately, of course, to throw out the government that was there. But what is happening now is that the, the world needs to understand that this is a horrible thing that has happened to a peaceful country. There's been over 500,000 killed. And all the, all the Libyans want is their country back. And they want to cleanse their country completely of Al-Qaeda. So this is, Dr. Corsi wrote an article on this. Uh, he released it on... I think it was Monday it came out, or Sunday. It came out Sunday because I sent a copy of the repeat sessions, and he emailed back to me immediately and said I would call you on Monday, but I haven't heard from him yet. It's a Russian, Russian published the, it that yeah, day. The we've Voice been. of Russia, we've been on there three or four times. The Russian uh, posted it immediately. Uh, we had a tribal leader speak on it. You can go to the website, The Voice of Russia, and look up uh, John Robles. Robles. He lives in Russia, and, and they're very interested. They don't have any of this information in Russia. They're very, very interested in this. And so we've been on The Voice of Russia. We've been on three or four radio shows this last weekend. Guess, guess who they're most interested in? John McCain. They said he sounds like a real criminal. Why in the hell is he still in office? They want to get all the dirt on John McCain. So even the Russians know more than what the people are. Imagine him being on a constitutional committee. Imagine that. Oh, my God. He was with Bill Hodge. Oh yeah, we, we sent photos out of, of McCain receiving an award from Bell Hodge, who's one of the biggest Al Qaeda in the world, and McCain sitting there grinning like a raccoon eating shit through a picket fence, <laughs> accepting this award from Bell Hodge. Pardon my yeah. French. Can you define for yes, some people who Al Qaeda is? Al Qaeda is is the terrorist yeah. organization originally uh, organized by the CIA, and uh, they were well funded, trained, and everything by the CIA. Now they've gone rogue because they own Libya. They, own, they probably collected $100 billion of Libyan money. They've got the oil income. They own that country. Now they said, we don't need the United States anymore. We're going to take over the world. And when you've got these psychopaths that were trained, it takes, it takes a special mentality to, to even be qualified to be Al-Qaeda, and the CIA has been, been training them for 40 or 50 years. And it's not just Al-Qaeda. It's Muslim Brotherhood, Ansar al-Sharia, all the rest of them. Yes, sir. They're originally, start, they're originally started by Zidney Brzezinski, who's actually a political advisor for Obama. Well, look who he was before that, Jimmy Carter. Couldn't even speak English, and he was the head advisor to Jimmy Carter. But, but you know, the, the uh, MI6 started Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Obama has been a member of Muslim Brotherhood forever. Everybody in the, in the Orient, everybody in the Middle East knew that. When we were in Libya, they oh, we're so proud, we're fi you're finally going to have a Muslim president, and who's that? Obama, and I said, no, no, he says, no, 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 he's Muslim. Yeah, but you have to understand, one of the things about Libya nobody knows was that Libya was completely against radical Islam. Yeah. Completely. It was the most progressive Muslim country in the world. Women were emancipated there in the 70s. They had completely free to do whatever they wanted, and they hated radicals. You could not have a passport picture in Libya with a beard or with a Muslim hat. They didn't allow people to do that, and they had better security than we did. So... That country, to have that country taken over and handed to the two or three percent of radicals that were in that country is, is, a, is a crime 
against humanity that you can't even measure. And John McCain has, has had his arm around Al Qaeda in Benghazi saying, these are my heroes. Then he went to Syria and did the same thing. We were captured, we were captured by Al Qaeda, taken their torture center. They sent us to be killed, chopped up, and burned. And we got out of there with three miracles. And since we've been back here, we've been targeted by this country because we saw all the atrocities of NATO orchestrated by the United States. Thank you. Really? And, and, the, and their DVD covers all this stuff? And what they're talking about now in Libya is all new stuff. So, and they're passing that on to our government. So, anyways, um, welcome back there. Okay, so I want to move on because we still have to get Q up here. And I do want to introduce John Lawson. John, would you like to say something for a minute yeah. about what you do? Well, Maybe. Just a couple minutes, okay. Well, you know that's a hard job for you. I know, I know. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm John Lawson. I carry around with me everywhere I go. This uh, DVD is called My Opera 21. It's about the extermination of black people in America. And um, one of the things that I want to do, that I'm going to do, I'm running for a state senate again. I ran last time, but I'm running again. The Republican Party in uh, District 23, there are six state representatives. They're all the Democrats. They have one state senator, he's a Democrat, and we have a congresswoman, uh, she's a Democrat. The official Republican Party of Dallas County is forbidding anybody, any Republican, to run against any of those Democrats in South Dallas County. The rhetoric is that we're going to take Dallas County back. But you can't take it back if you're going to concede half the county. Black people go to the polls, and we vote 95% for the Democrats. And that's because of our ignorance. If black people was aware of the extermination that's taking place through abortion, how the founder, the number one abortion provider in America, is Planned Parenthood, who was started by a woman whose name is Margaret Sanger, who hated black people and who was dedicated to eliminating black people from America. And the Democratic Party is wholeheartedly behind her organization. And black people don't know that. And what I'm going to do is distribute 90,000 of these in the black community. And I'm going to make 90,000 black families promise to watch it. And once that happens, there's going to be a different level of understanding and when there's a different level of understanding, there's going to be a different level of behavior as far as how black people go to the polls and vote. So I've got some of these. If you'd like to get one, I'm not really selling them, but I do need donations. So if you get one, give us a donation and it'll help out. Thank you so much. Y'all need to hear something from Eugene Ralph. He's he's another person that's really an activist, you know, activist leader. Okay, so now with no further ado, is that even right? Okay, let's see. We're gonna introduce Q. I um his name is Q Coleman, but of course he has a, a Spanish name. Um, he's gonna tell you his story about how he lived in Cuba under Castro and the parallels that he sees happening in our country. Um, we are very lucky to have people like him. Um, that will talk about this and maybe open the eyes of some people that enjoy living ignorant or in bliss with their head in the sand. But the, there are some things that are happening that are very obvious if they will just look and see. So I don't want to have a longer introduction than that, but he's written a book. He's written a book that there, he's got some autographed copies up here for $20, and he's always out there. One thing about Q, two things, or several things about Q, um, he has a group that's called Rally Force, and whenever we have an event, I'll send him the information, and he pushes it out to a lot of people. He's always out there on the picket line, or what's well, not picket line, but a protest. He's out there protesting. He has some great ideas, like a, a white umbrella with stickers on it. That's so clever because it's so hot in Texas when you're when you're protesting. That's it's really clever, and that's the ingenuity of someone who's really trying to get out there and do stuff. And he was out there with us uh, for Obama, and uh, he brought his people. So I would like to introduce Q Coleman, or 
Q. How do you say your name? Kike. Kike? Kike Carbonero. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do that. about Cuba. Um, before 1959, when Castro took over power, Cuba was called the Paris of Latin America. There was nothing that happened in Paris, France, one day that Havana, Cuba, did not have within a week. It was uh, an extremely advanced uh, nation, culturally, socially, uh, even economically, their uh, peso was par with the American dollar at the time. Sometimes even two or three cents more expensive. I've got a, the bobbing heads here are Cubans. I, I, I found a Cuban table here, and, uh, and I'm going to ask them that, uh, which is beautiful, I, I expected to see a bunch of Cubans here in the middle of 
my mind of land, but um, it, please feel free to interject. That's, this is what, what this is all about. But uh, um, did, did it have uh, injustices, inequalities? Did it have poverty? Uh, yes. Uh, were we on our way to uh, fixing those? Yes, absolutely. Cuba had a very, very strong middle class, a growing middle class, far in excess of anything, just about anything that Latin America had at the time. And therefore, it was right for revolution. Because, like what's happening here, where the middle class is getting beat up, it's not the proletariat that is a revolutionary class. Marx was wrong. It's the middle class that is the one that thinks of revolution. The middle class that uh, wants something better, but is scared, priceless, that they may lose what they have. And that tension is what causes, in my book, a real revolutionary class. Um, some quick, quick things. Um, the, um, the mortality rate in Cuba was one of the best in Latin America. The life expectancy in Cuba was among the highest in the world. Cuba also had an excellent educational system and impressive literacy rates. It was fourth in Latin America. Um, Cuba was fifth in the world, in the world, in television sets per capita, way back in 1959, 1960. Free Castro Cuba had um, 58 daily newspapers of different political hues and ranked eighth in the world in member uh, radio stations. Now remember, Cuba's the size of Florida. In 1958, a year before Castro came to power, Cuba had a population of 6.6 .6 million. At that time, there were 35,000 hospital beds in the country, an average of one hospital bed per 190 inhabitants, a number which then exceeded the goal of developed countries, which was about 200 inhabitants per hospital bed. In 1960, the United States had one hospital bed per 109 inhabitants. Um, productivity. Uh, in the 1950s, which Cuba's main uh, product at the time has always been sugar, its main staple. There were many other things that we produced. But um, in the 50s, Cuba produced 5.63 million metric tons of sugar per year. Today's, incidentally, Cuba, uh, its production ranges from 1 to 1 1.5 metric tons per year. Tobacco, rum, their other products have been plateaued out, while in the rest of Latin America, uh, they have increased exponentially. The, the country has, has pretty well frozen. <coughs> Cuba today imports 80% of the products it consumes, and those are rational. And if uh, Venezuela ever finally cuts off their oil, they're going to be in real deep pocket. <laughs> um, they like to blame the U.S. embargo for their problems, but, you know, Canada deals with Cuba, Latin America, Europe, everybody deals, goes and continues to deal with Cuba. So the only thing, the only ones that can blame themselves, uh, blame is themselves because uh, the embargo has been the embargo of dictators everywhere. It's an embargo on truth, an embargo on uh, people wanting to advance themselves, um, an embargo on liberty. Uh, how did this happen? Well, in uh, 1959, a um, lawyer and uh, university organizer uh, <laughs> um, took over power as head of a uh, revolution that promised peaceful change, progress, and justice for all. He was a great orator, this guy. Believable. 
in speech after speech, he kept promising uh, absolute respect for the liberties of information and the press, as well as the political and individual rights guaranteed by the 1940 Cuban Constitution. There will be liberty for those who speak in our favor, he said, and also for those who speak against us. Killing does not make anyone any stronger. Only cowards and criminals kill their advertising, advertisers, adversaries. My English is not the word. Uh, when, uh, when people started worrying about the whole thing starting to smack of communism, and uh, Cuban sheeple became to, uh, began to get real concerned, Castro came out with another famous speech and declared, so far as communism is concerned, I can say one thing. I am not a communist, and neither do the communists have sufficient power to become a determinant factor in my country. I am not a communist for three reasons. First, because communism is a dictatorship of one class over the other, and I have fought all my life against dictatorships. I am not going to succumb to a dictatorship of a proletariat. And second reason is that communism means hate and class, and I'm totally opposed to that philosophy. The third reason is I'm not a communist because communism is against God and the church. But people kept worrying because things were happening, and he finally came out again and he says, fear of the danger of communism, why? 